I don't know just what they put in. I think it's diesel fuel and something else. Yeah. And they can just make small connect to you. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. So it conceals conceals so the area. Going, so the, yeah. So the enemy can't see. Because in Korea, uh, the Americans and the Koreans generally wanted <coughs> to occupy the high, the high ground, yeah. and the mountains don't always go in nice, straight, straight lines. So when you're, you can be almost ahead of the line in one place, and back of it in another. So that's why they had to keep some, this area particularly smoke. Do you guys have like enough supplies and stuff, enough food and everything, or you, were like were you guys like all right and you guys were eating fine and stuff like that? Was, that, was it hard at times like to eat like a right amount of food and stuff, or were you guys like pretty well supplied? We were, <clears throat> we were well supplied. We even had uh, we even had ice cream about once a week <laughs> that they brought up. Yeah, yeah, we had. Uh, of course, as I say, we were more in back of the front lines. The, but there was the um, fellows that were on the front lines were had ample food, plenty of food, you know, well supplied. How did you stay in touch with your family? Well, through letters. Letter. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have any uh, any opportunity to uh, email anybody or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> we didn't have that. Uh, sometimes. Uh, it depends where, what kind of a unit you were with. Sometimes you might be able to, to contact people by uh, radio, mm -hmm. but uh, that was a, a rare occasion. How often did you write home? Well, I used to write my wife about every night, just about every night. My parents at least once or twice a week. Did you have any children at home? Yes, I, when I was in Korea, I had uh, a little boy that was, uh, well, he was born while I was over there. So he just uh, a few months old. That's got to give you some motivation to go out there. Hmm? That's got to give you some motivation. Yeah, that's right. Motivation to get home. Yeah, really. <laughs> did, you get, did you get pictures sent of your baby when you were over there? Oh, yeah. My wife sent me a lot of pictures. It was kind of interesting because they always said that uh, you know, the, if anything happened like that, the mother was to notify the Red Cross and they would get in touch, you know, tell you when the baby was born and and that type of thing immediately. Well, I got her letter through the mail several days before the Red Cross notified me that the baby was born. So the mail was a little faster than the, uh, the military. Yeah. Press, yeah. What was your uh, first impression on arriving in Korea? In Korea? Yeah. Well, uh, when we got there, it was, uh, I got there, it was, uh, well, <laughs> my first impression was it was dusty. Because we, we had to travel quite a distance on a, on a open truck to get to our uh, unit. <clears throat> and uh, it was in the, uh, Summertime, so it was uh, roads were uh, just a cloud yeah. of dust. We were covered with dust, and it was, uh, you know, looked look fairly desolate, but not entirely different than around here. I think yeah. it was more mountainous, but uh, um, not not a, a great deal of difference. Uh, how do people entertain themselves there? How many what? How, how did people entertain themselves there, like from day to day? Well, uh, from time to time there was some uh, shows that came from the United States. Yeah. And I remember Debbie Reynolds being over there. I, but, uh, no, and, well, we, uh, in the summertime and that, played, uh, they played baseball. And stuff like that. There was inner inner company uh, games, you know, whenever that was possible. And uh, well, and uh, I think occasionally we did have movies. They bring in movies into the mess hall, and uh, they 
get an opportunity to see a movie, you know. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Did you form strong friendships <coughs> with your other um, four? Uh, not <laughs> well. Yes, I did. There was some some fellows that I uh, went uh, when I went to school when I went to Officers Canada School that I uh, uh, got to know real well, and I still correspond with and still talk to one fellow who lives in Rockford, Illinois, and another fellow in New Jersey, and uh, we still have strong ties. That way. Did you have to do any training before you went to war? Did, like training-wise, did you do anything like that? Or uh, yeah. How? Like boot camp or anything? Oh yeah. Well, when I first went in, when I was drafted in uh, 1950, I went to Fort Dix, and we went to boot camp there for about, I think it was six weeks. And uh, then from there I went to leadership school, and from there I was able to go to Officers Canada School in Fort Riley, Kansas. And that was uh, that was a uh, uh, six months deal out there. And then from there, when we graduated from Officers Canada School, then we were assigned to a branch of service. I was assigned to the engineers, so then I had, uh, from there I went to Fort Belvoir, Virginia for some additional engineering training. Did you get to choose an, to be an engineer? No, you, you could, when, I, when it came time to get, when it was near graduation time, yeah. then the, they gave you a, a paper and said, well, put down what branch you might like to, to go in, because yeah. Uh, Fort Riley was what they called branch and material. Uh, you just went to school there and then you were assigned a branch. So I put down, uh, I think I put down artillery and I don't know whether armored and infantry or something like that because we had been told that there wasn't much chance of getting into the engineers because they didn't take very many. But as it turned out at graduation time, there was quite a few of us that were yeah. sent to the engineer. I guess at that time they had a lot of engineer officers that were uh, returning from Korea yeah. and so they needed replacements. How old were you when you got drafted? Uh, let's see, 1950. I, I've been 20, 22. That's far back. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you came back, did you had you gone to college before? I went to uh, the forerunner of Erie Community College. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't called that at that time. But I doubt it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the war, did you still stay in the military, or did you uh, have another job or career, or did you go back to college? No, I, I, uh, I got out of the military and came home here to Orchard Park, and uh, I was in the construction industry after that. Did you travel anywhere else when you before besides Korea when you were? Well, concerned? we first went to Japan, and then to Korea. That's that's the extent of where I traveled. Oh, yeah. I traveled across across the United States. Uh, we left from Seattle, so we did travel across the United States. But that's yeah. I didn't get to go anyplace else. How long were you in Japan? Oh, well, I think I was in Japan. Just. Uh, Short of a year. Over there. Do you remember any like humorous or particular events that happened? Uh, I don't. You know, I saw that question on your finger, <laughs> and I'm you were trying to think of something, and I really, really at this stage, I can't uh, come up with you know things that would be really that I would consider humorous. So. <laughs> yeah, it's war. It's not usually the funny thing yeah. to joke about. <laughs> Did you feel any particular like pressure or stress when you were out there in the battlefield? Well, yeah, you're, uh, you know, you're always mindful of what's uh, of what's going on. Uh, as I say, we weren't well when we are. We're, 
working up near the front lines and you're, you're uh, you know, under stress. But we were, uh, it wasn't a, a lot of, a lot of activity going yeah. on at that time. Did you believe in what you were fighting for? Yeah, because uh, it was, you know, the, the spread of communism and that's what we were trying to, to uh, stop and uh, keep the country from becoming completely com communistic. Was it North Korea or South Korea that was communist? Was it, was it South? No, it was the North. Yeah. North, yeah. yeah. Were you awarded any medals? Well, uh, the only medal I got was the Army, Army Commendation Medal, and that's probably in the rank of medals, that's probably the lowest one. And then comes a brown star and silver star and so yeah. forth. But uh, they, uh, that depends a, a lot on who your company commander is. My company commander was a West Pointer, and uh, he didn't believe that uh, medals were just handed out yeah. because you were there. If there was some reason, good, but not. You know, and we weren't, uh, you know, directly in a lot of combat and things like that, so yeah. he didn't know. Did you feel comfortable serving underneath him? No, no, he was a, a, a good soldier. He was a, a, a You good did feel comfortable serving under him? Hmm? No. You did feel comfortable serving under him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he was, well, somebody that, if... It's like anything else. He he knew his job. Yeah. And and uh, so you're comfortable with it. You know he's gonna. You know he's gonna do his part. Yeah. And uh, you know help you as much as you can. And so you're 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 comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh, looking back, do you think the sacrifice you made during this war? Uh, do you think it was worth all of the work accomplished? Yeah, I would I would say so. It's kind of hard to put a really put your finger on it, you know. Yeah. That it, it is, but uh, I you know I wish that they could have made all of Korea uh, free, but that that didn't come about. And uh, but uh, I think it I think it was worth it. And and now that you see these uh, how the South Koreans have progressed. As opposed to the North Koreans, sure. it's. Uh, uh, I think it was one. Makes you think you did something. Yeah. Did you have like a certain time you had to get up and the time you had to go to bed was like a long day, or like? Well, we were generally up about. Uh, well, I don't know, about five thirty in the morning, and generally we had to do uh, <coughs> PT. In other words, uh, one of the officers had to lead the company and and. Uh, uh, PT outside exercises and then generally a run down the road and so forth and then uh, breakfast after that and then at night that was after you ate and took care of whatever chores you had to do you could go to bed you know yes. yeah whatever there wasn't a set set okay. time do you think your war experiences changed your life uh, I guess probably the way it changed my life was that it gave me a, a broader outlook on yeah. the rest of the world, and, or that part of the world, the Asian world, and how they lived and, uh, uh, you know, the differences. Yeah. You, could, you can understand, and then when things happen now over there, I can understand a little bit better. What they're going or why, why, why these things happen? Yeah, we have a hard time here in the United States realizing the different cultures over there, yeah, we do. how they how they live, and how they've been. They're you know they're old. Their cultures are yeah. thousands of years old. You know that uh, customs and that. Were any of your other family members or friends from back home in the war? 
Uh, not, uh, I had a brother-in-law that was in the Second World War, but nobody in uh, this war, in the Korean War. I, I got a few pictures here. I don't know if you're uh, interested or not, but that's that's how we looked over there. That was that was our our campsite. So you can see the mountains. This is where we where we were in tents. That that's our that's me again there. That's our company was called a Gopher for the engineers. That was our call sign. We were with the 40th Infantry Division. Is that you? Yeah. That's a nice <laughs> that's, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, my Jeep. And this is our, on our company area, we had a uh, PX and that built out of logs. We, we build a lot of things out of, out of logs over there. What's a PX? Hmm? What's a PX? Well, that's a, uh, post, well, it's post exchange. In other words, once a month we'd get uh, uh, rations in from the United States, uh, candy, cigarettes, um, let's see, I don't, yeah, we got a limited amount of beer, uh, 3.2 beer, and, uh, uh, you know, a few other necessities, and then uh, uh, that's where we kept them and they were sold. This is, uh, up, this is up in division <laughs> headquarters. That, we're building a, a thing there, and then they put a uh, like a tent over the top of it. This is going to be the general's, uh, our division commander's office in there. Did you? Those were the tents then, right? Where you slept in that picture? Yeah, yeah. We were. Hey, we slept in tents. tents. On cots or? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the climate like in Korea? Climate is yeah. it's not not a lot unlike here. It might at times get colder, and we had real cold weather, mm -hmm. and we got snow uh, over there also, uh, but not a, not an awful lot different than than here. I think if you look on the map or on the globe, you'll see that you know, the, the, same. the latitude's the latitude. about the same. This is a, a bunker that we were out of logs. Those were built, and then the, the top were covered with sandbags on the side, and uh, I don't know just what that was going to be used for. Yeah. And this is the same area after we had our big snowstorm over there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was really, it was really a terrific snowstorm, and of course, I'm not too well equipped to handle the oh, snow. Yeah. Do you remember the day your service ended? Yeah. Well, I remember landing here in, in Buffalo yeah. and uh, flying home. From uh, Seattle, we came. Uh, we came by ship to Seattle, and then uh, we were able to fly, fly home from there. Yeah, I remember that well. My wife was there with my little son. That's got to be a good memory. Yeah. Um. Is that you waving? No, those are those are. Uh, uh no, those are some of the. We had in our uh, our uh, company, we also had Korean soldiers with mm -hmm. us that were assigned to us, and that's some of the couple of the Korean boys that were with us, and they they fought, uh, they were uh, fought right with our our people. We also had uh, assigned to us as an engineer, we had a company of uh, Koreans that were. Well, we called them chiggies, but they were they were like a men that that uh, couldn't serve in the in the army, but they were like a well, like, kind of hard to describe. But they were <coughs> they worked for us. Yeah. In other words, <coughs> we'd go out, we would uh, put in a requisition every day for so many men. And they would yeah. they would go out and get a job to do. Yeah, and and work with us. They had their own separate camp. So they were there for like the manpower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were like a. They, uh, we had a lot of, lot of fun with them. Of course, we couldn't. Couldn't communicate too much. I yeah. mean, it was, well, they they, you know, 
Of course, this, uh, the GIs pick up the, Korean. the Korean words. Not always the best words, but yeah. they pick them up. And the, and the Korean boys, they pick, uh, picked our language up, of course, too, some of them. So it was tougher to communicate with them? Uh, uh, they pretty, we could pretty well uh, yeah. get back and forth. And we had, uh, we had uh, the officers, we had uh, what we called house boys. We had one, one that <coughs> took care of us, our, our tent area. He did it, took care of our laundry and, <coughs> and uh, took care of our tent and that. And he could t speak pretty good English and he used to interpret back and forth for us. Yeah. Um, did you? I'm sorry, go for it. How did you spell your first week's home? After you left Korea? Well, just kind of relaxing and getting to know my little Sorry. son and my wife again <laughs> and the rest of my family. Getting kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, as I say, you come home on the ship and then you get on a plane and you come home and it's kind of a fast transition. I mean, one day you're all regimented, you've got everything is laid out hour by hour practically and then you come home and yeah, you, tons of free yeah, time. You're, you're you know hmm. so it's 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 an adjustment yeah <coughs> excuse me would you miss most about home besides your family uh i guess uh uh a nice bed <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh shower facilities and stuff like that we we uh we didn't have uh what they generally generally rigged up for a shower was they built a platform up on top and had a uh, 55 gallon drum full of water and they put a, a heater in that we had heaters emergent heaters and they put that in there and heated it up and you could stand under there and get a shower but it was limited to the amount of water, and of course, uh, there was a whole company of, of uh, GIs that, that used it, so you didn't get a shower every day. And, uh, it wasn't available. How, so, oh, sorry. How many men were like in a company? How many? Yeah. Uh, I think there was, I'm trying to think now. Probably 150 or something. Yeah, I think 150. Did you ever kill anybody? Hmm? Did you ever kill anybody? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ted to ask that. <laughs> um, did you, what, which jobs did you do more than others? Like you had numerous jobs you had to do as being an engineer, but what was possibly like your favorite or your least favorite? Well, you know, well, <coughs> we enjoyed the the construction of bunkers and yeah. and uh, wall bridges and stuff like that. I enjoyed that part of it. Uh, I guess that probably the most enjoyable part of it. Uh, and also, well, I, I enjoyed being with the men. Right? Yeah. yeah uh, and you know they were they were from all over and mm -hmm. uh, uh, all different races and everything else. So. It was interesting to to talk to them and to know you know where they came from and yeah. their backgrounds. That was a, a good part of it. Get to know them, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was your worst experience in the war? Mm. This could bring up some bad memories. I'm sorry if I do. But. Well, I guess the, my worst experience really didn't happen there. Uh, just before I came home, we had, uh, they wanted us to dig a gun emplacement with yeah. a bulldozer and so forth. And I went out there with a young fellow and we laid out where we were going to do it. <clears throat> and we were right, right ready to do it. And after I left, I heard that they went back there and dug the emplacement. And this young fellow, his name was Sanderson jumped off the the bulldozer and landed on a mine. And I never heard whether he was killed or not, but 
I know he was severely injured, and uh, that that upset me. Uh, really shook me up because it could have happened when we were when we were there ourselves. That's one thing you never knew where these mines were. And that was uh, that was a dangerous part of it. When you were in Korea, did you feel um, like separated from the United States? Did you kind of know what was happening back home? Did they keep We didn't. Exploring? We didn't get uh, too much news from uh, the United States. You know, uh, I guess the only way we most of it was through the letters that we got from people. Some uh, some fellows had. You know, their parents or somebody would send them a newspaper from home, you know. I think I, uh, my parents, you know, once in a while would send me the, the uh, well, it's called the Citizen now, it wasn't mm -hmm. called that then, but yeah. mm -hmm. anyways, that paper, you know. And, uh, you know, we, were, we weren't really, really didn't have a lot of news of what was going on over here. In fact, the fact is we probably didn't know really what was going on too much on the left or on the right of us. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that was more, uh, that information was more in the higher echelons of the, of the division than, than, what we, than what we got. So it must have been a pretty big change, like going away and coming back a year later, and what had made the change besides your son? Yeah, well, uh, Anything major, or was it just basically just the park? No, you know, it, well, at that time, Orchard Park in the 50s, uh, there was a lot of build, a lot more building going on. Yeah. But uh, there wasn't a lot of major changes here mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Orchard Park when I got back. But it was, of course, an experience for me because I had never been away. I think the farthest I'd ever been was probably up into Canada on vacation at some time. So I hadn't traveled the United States uh, very much and uh, or at all. So it was uh, that was uh, the experience for me yeah, to be able to do that. While I was in this while I was in down in Fort Belvoir my I my, my wife and I were married and she moved down in Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of Washington. We had an apartment down there. So that was good. We did a lot of uh, sightseeing in Washington. Yeah. And at that time, you could walk around Washington and go in any of the buildings. Uh, it wasn't, security wasn't a a anything, you know. You could just walk in and walk around the Capitol building or wherever. And so that, that was a, that was a nice experience uh, yeah. to be able to be down there around Washington. Were you able to talk about your war experiences when you first got home, or did it take a while? Yeah, you, no, I, I, I didn't talk much about it. <clears throat> I think uh, as the years go by, you, you kind of yeah. tend to talk more about it, and some of these things become you know, uh, I guess it's just like any anything you you tend to remember probably the the good parts, and you don't think too much about the, the bad parts that went on. Yeah. But, uh, um, how do you feel about the war in Iraq today? Well, I got a lot of, I guess mixed emotions about it. Uh, I, th I think I think we're getting a, a distorted picture from the media on it because I think they're showing all, obviously they show, just like here, they show all of the bad stuff that's going on. Uh, seems that the, the soldiers that are returning and are interviewed are saying that there's a lot of good stuff going on yeah. over there. Uh, I, I think I myself. I think they, I think they should have more troops over there, and really go in and and uh, 
clean this thing up. But uh, uh, of course, I can, there are, this country has always been reluctant to send people overseas and to send people to war. That, we're not a, a warlike nation. We don't we don't want to go to war, and uh, we uh, our people and our Congress and everything is reluctant to do that. But I think I think we need some more people over there. Uh, I I hope that uh, we'll be able to get out of there soon. Uh, it's I don't I hope that it not, doesn't become another Vietnam. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I th I think what they what they went in there to do, and the the, uh, the premise that they had was was worthwhile. I think those people, I think by and large, appreciate what the, what they did because they must have lived under a terrible regime over there. When you were um, um we gotta we've gotta right. see end of the period. Okay. So we've got to uh, wrap up the interview. Right. Mr. Nice, do you have any final words? No, just to s thank you all for your time. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, hope that uh, we haven't upset the apple cart too much yet. <laughs> 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 Great. Well,